Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be putting a Banks Derringer and I Dash on a 2018 GMC L5P Duramax. I wanted to show one thing on the trace here uh, that I didn't get a chance to do. The um, So this truck, uh, making its peak torque at about 55 miles an hour, right in that range there, you're gonna be running, you know, uh, 380, uh, 380, 390 horsepower right there. Its peak horsepower comes in there, uh, just shy of 68 miles an hour. Uh, torque is dropping off there. So uh, really, really nice torque curve on this truck. Um, it makes power well and it feels, it felt good on the dyno too. Had to break back in and wanted to show you the curve on that. So now let's go ahead and get started with our installation. Okay, our first step on our installation before we start with our, start installing our Derringer is go ahead and we're going to remove the negative battery cables on both, both batteries. One thing about Chevrolet's is they finally gotten their battery cables in a configuration that's the negatives are actually easy to get to now. The first harness that we're going to start with after we've got our negative cables off the battery is our um, our map sensor and our fuel fuel rail pressure sensor harness from Banks. Banks actually um, tags this with the sensors that it's supposed to go to so you see map and fuel rail pressure sensor so you really can't mess it up and it's pretty easy. I want to say another note about this because this truck came on with a different module on it. Uh, I had to remove the module before uh, putting the banks on. The first thing that I had to do there is I had to go after the fuel rail pressure sensor. Now the fuel rail pressure sensors on L5P Duramax are on the passenger side. They're in a really really bad uh, position you've got to kind of contort your hands to get to it so it took me an extra 10 or 15 minutes just to get that um, just to get that electrical connector unhooked so uh, with that being said the nice thing about the banks is the fuel rail pressure sensor hookup that we're going to attack is going to be right here on the top of the air intake so super super simple to get to uh, and we'll cut back in and get started on that all right so Again, two sensors that we're working with here. We're going to be working with the MAP sensor, the temperature and MAP sensor, intake air temperature and MAP sensor, and then the fuel rail pressure sensor. Uh, that's this drop right here. Now, like I was saying, when I got this truck, it already had another module on it. And what had happened is the safety clip on this, they had already broken it and they actually had it in the wrong, they actually had it right back in here and upside down. With the safety clip off of here, you can still use the uh, use the connector because it's still going to go on and lock but to release the map sensor we just push on the back of it here there's one tab right there i think adam can see that i'll push to it with my tool and then you just simply push that down and then that will disconnect your uh your map sensor all right so we're gonna go ahead and hook our map sensor up at the Banks harness. It's marked map right here. Go ahead and reinstall that. And in fact, on Banks' harness, they don't use a safety tab back. So that worked out good for us in this situation. Now, our female side, we wanna hook back to our stock harness. goes one away there you are push it till it clips and you're you're good to go now let's go after our fuel rail sensor it has a safety clip here in the center of it I'll just use a little pick like that to disengage it I'll show you how to do that again just the back side of it push and you're good then you can push down and slide the connector out don't pull on the wires, make sure that you pull on the connector. So we go back to our harness and we go with the one that says fuel rail pressure sensor. So male to male here until it clips and push your safety connector back up and your female end will go back and it'll push until it clips. No safety harness on that side. So the way I'm gonna route this 
I'm going to route this along our stock wiring location back here. I'm gonna actually go up, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go along this wiring harness. I'm gonna bring this along this wiring harness right here and down and over there. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this down along this wiring harness. I'm gonna come hopefully end up back in here somewhere to hook up my Derringer module. All right, I wanted to talk just a little bit about my wiring routing. Adam can show you here. We ran along the stock wiring harness. There is a catalytic converter at the base of, or at the back of the turbo there. I didn't want to run along that cow harness because it has, there's going to be heat there. The Chevrolet has uh, heat reflective tape on that wiring harness. I knew that that was going to uh, be another issue there. I don't have that on my wiring harness. So we've come over here into this area and I'll find a final place to put our Derringer module itself. One thing I want to talk about on this is there is a O-ring, a red O-ring that goes on this side. Uh, that's for later, but I want to make sure that I talk about this. When you get your Derringer out, make sure that you watch for those O-rings. They could be on this, the male side of this, female side of that. This one was in my package, so I just want to make sure that you watch out for that one. So now we're going to go ahead and hook our wiring harness up to the Derringer module itself. It just plugs into the bottom like this. All right. This is our control wire that goes inside to our I-dash. If you got the switch, it would be the switch, but now I wanted to talk about that rubber O-ring. So it goes on the male end right here for ease of installation on this cord. So we're gonna go ahead and attach our control cord to our I-dash itself. And you can see inside of the Derringer, there are two lugs here at the top there are recesses in your other wiring harness. Just go ahead and make your recesses match up there. And then you want it switched to unlock and then to lock it. You just simply pull down like that with your thumb and you've got a nice tight connection. Now I'm gonna get the weather. Uh, I came over here and I didn't have the weather uh, enclosure for that. I'm gonna grab that real quick and be right back. We have another a little terminating cap that comes with the Derringer itself. If you don't have any expansion things that you're gonna be running here, EGT probe, so on, you just put your terminating cap in same way and then flip your lock down and then you've got a nice secure, uh, nice secure and a uh, protected connector for your Derringer module itself. This end of this is going to go inside of the cab to our uh, to our I-dash itself. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take uh, a few zip ties. I'm gonna zip tie it up right here. It doesn't really need to be very fancy. I've just got to get this wire inside of the cab now. We're putting our controller wire through the, um, through the firewall now. If you ever, you've ever done this on a Chevrolet, you know that this job basically sucks. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna go ahead and feed this through the grommet and pushing it around the grommet. So a couple of different ways to do that. What I like to do is just kind of get the grommet started with my thumbs down. And then I just continue to feed the wire in like so. Now, as I'm doing this, what really helps is to have someone on the inside catching the wire for you. All right, on the interior of the truck, when you're catching the wiring harness coming through from the engine bay, it's easiest just to take the cover off of this, uh, off of this panel cover, or take the panel cover off apologize unlatch it there's two latches on the right side one on the bottom and then just pull straight down like that then your main wiring harness grommet will be right there and you can feel the wire coming through from the exterior so we've got our wire here 
and got it through again it's just so much easier if you've got somebody that's able to help you do this um, there's really not a whole lot that we can film there it's just it's just one of those things you just got to kind of grab it and growl still got our cover off so i've got sam out there helping me we're going to go ahead and pull as much of this wire through as we can until the derringer is actually close to the firewall there and then sam will let me know when that's all i've got okay all right and that little bit of extra cord i'll tie up in there so my routing is going to be here to the pod so that's going to give us plenty of that now we're just going to go ahead and throw our cover back on this panel okay so we're going to go ahead and actually mount the derringer unit or right now um i've seen it mounted on this crossbar i just there's going to be vibration there so i, I don't want that i'm not saying that it's, it's necessarily a bad place to mount it but I'm gonna go a different direction. I'm gonna go back to my main wiring harness here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and zip tie it to keep it from falling down and getting in steering column or steering shaft or anything like that. So I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm just trying to keep it from from moving from there. So that really finishes our under the hood part of it, except for doing our battery cables. So now we've got our cord into the cab, so let's move inside the cab. With this truck gonna be receiving an I-dash, we're gonna go ahead and hook up the OBD2 cable. So your OBD2 cable, just plug her straight into the OBD2. And then we will route it with the cable for the derringer itself right up through here. So we're going to take, be taking both of these wires. These panels, just be real careful with them. I started at the bottom and then I run my fingers up through there. They pop out all the way. Oh, why my little backup fuses fell out of there? All right, now with that out, what we'll do is we will just route both of these cords up and onto the dash. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Kind of give it the distance I want. This truck is getting a cut mounted mount, for lack of a better word. All right, so now I'm gonna bring the, my other, cord up and I'll put it in here too. Shove it back behind the weather stripping. Then I'll shorten it up where I want it. And then go ahead and put my panel back on. And one of the final steps of our installation here is we're gonna go ahead and put our negative cables back on the truck. And with this, we are ready to dyno. Now it's time to mount our I-dash in the truck. And what we've done, we've already put our side panel back on. We've kind of got our wires uh, in the length that we're gonna want them. I'm gonna be using Banks's mounting cup here. This is a six, part number 63319 on this. Um, they also have a pillar pod for these L5Ps. Uh, and we also call out what colors you should get. There's only two different colors on these interiors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to mount my cup and inside of the cup installation package is a alcohol prep pad, which you will need to use to mount the cup. So I'm gonna kinda just gauge where I want it. I know I want it just north of the bottom of that handle. Go ahead and clean it up with my prep pad where I'm gonna go there. While that's drying, I'll go ahead and take my protective film off. And what I'm also gonna do while that's drying is I'm gonna go ahead and run both of my wires into the cup. Just like so. Leave myself about 
three or four inches there. Just another second for that to dry. All right, once that's dried, we're gonna go ahead and mount it up where we think it should go there. I'll try to give Adam a little bit of room. Press firm against it, and then just flip the locking tab, and that should have you mounted. Now, we're gonna go ahead and connect our I-dash. There is a six pin and a four pin uh, prongs on here. You wanna make sure that the, ex the expansion uh, port has got its blocker in it. Now, when you go to put these wires on, don't make the same mistake I did when I first installed it. I actually had them uh, on the four pin. You gotta have your latches up because the four pin will go a couple different ways. So these latches, make sure they're up on both of them. And push in until they clip or until they... And when you touch a button, that automatically wakes it up there. So let's turn the key on and then we'll turn it back off real quick. We can always reset by un unhooking the OBD2 and then hooking it back in. It won't power up this time because the truck's off. So there is our I-dash mounted. Looking good. So what we're gonna do now is we will go ahead and, and bring our wires back down, get everything where we want it, and then we're gonna cut everything where we want it and uh, and zip tie everything up underneath the dash. Then we'll show you some functionality of this I-dash. All right, we're gonna go ahead and show you some of the functionality of the, the I-dash Derringer here. And what we're gonna do is, right now with the key on, the Derringer, or the I-dash doesn't come on. It does not come on until it starts seeing RPM. So when the truck's running, it comes on. And first off, let's talk about power levels. If you want to switch, if you've got a Derringer and you want to switch through power levels, there's an up and down arrow right here. That'll totally take you to the different power levels. You can do it on the fly. I'll go all the way back down to stock. It's pretty awesome. Um, for the L5Ps, let's see, what else have we got here? So if you push your right button, this gets you out pretty much to the menu. You've got your gauge layout, gauge selection. Diagnostics is what I, one thing I want to show you here on the diagnostics for a vehicle. If you wanna go to the vehicle and that's where you get your reading, uh, reading clear diagnostic code, so on. You can check injector balance rates. One of the things that this also does is stationary and mobile regen. So you can actually force regen on these trucks, which is a really, really nice feature. If you wanna go back out, you push left and that takes you back out. You've got your alert set up. You can set it up for a shift light banks module everything this thing's very very powerful it picks up a ton of different parameters it's just awesome it's just really really awesome so now it's time for the fun part let's dyno So we got a dyno run now with the Banks Derringer on, and you can see uncorrected, it made exactly what it said it was going to make, 460 horsepower, 921 foot-pounds of torque, uh, which was really, really awesome. The truck runs great with the Derringer on it. I mean, it's, it's really, really smooth. Um, yeah, can't say enough good about it. As far as the trace goes, you're still having your torque on this truck still comes in just a little bit north of 54 miles an hour, 55, 56 miles an hour. Um, your highest horsepower is coming in just a little bit south of 68 miles an hour, so 67, 66 miles an hour is where it's, where it's making its most horsepower. That's of course, obviously that's fourth gear one to one. But yeah, yeah, it did it. I mean, the, 
you love to, to install products that actually work and do the exact things that they say they did. Banks told us you're gonna get 60 horsepower out of this module. That's exactly what we got out of it. Perfect, truck ran great, loves it, responsive, everything. So I'm Wade for Thoroughbred Diesel. Been a long time since we've done a bank installation video, a bank's installation video. We hope to change that. Um, if you have a question about this product or any L5P questions, give us a call. And as always, we appreciate it if you like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.